Chapter Four of Conjurer's House: A Romance of the Free Forest. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Roger Moline. Conjurer's House: A Romance of the Free Forest by Stuart Edward White. Chapter Four. In the open air, the men separated in quest of their various families or friends. The stranger lingered undecided for a moment on the top step of the veranda, and then wandered down the little street, if street it could be called where horses there were none. On the left ranged the square whitewashed houses with their dooryards, the old church, the workshop. To the right was a broad grass plot, and then the moose slipping by to the distant offing. Over a little bridge the stranger idled, looking curiously about him. The great trading-house attracted his attention, with its narrow picket lane leading to the door, the storehouse surrounded by a protective log fence, the fort itself a medley of heavy timbered stockades and square-block houses. After a moment he resumed his strolling. Everywhere he went the people looked at him, ceasing their varied occupations. No one spoke to him. No one hindered him. To all intents and purposes he was as free as the air. But all about the island flowed the barrier of the moose, and beyond frowned the wilderness, strong as iron bars to an unarmed man. Brooding on his imprisonment, the free trader forgot his surroundings. The post, the river, the forest, the distant bay faded from his sight, and he fell into deep reflection. There remained nothing of physical consciousness but a sense of the grateful spring warmth from the declining sun. At length he became vaguely aware of something else. He glanced up. Right by him he saw a handsome French half-breed sprawled out in the sun against a building, looking him straight in the face and flashing up at him a friendly smile. Hello said Achille Picard. "'You must been sleep. I call you two, three time.' The prisoner seemed to find something grateful in the greeting, even from the enemy's camp. Perhaps it merely happened upon the psychological moment for a response. "'Hello,' he returned, and seated himself by the man's side, lazily stretching himself in enjoyment of the reflected heat. "'You is come off Kettle Portage, eh?' said Achille. "'I think so. You is come trade those fur? "'It is bad business, dis conjure house. "'Old man, he no like that you trade those fur. "'He's very hard, dat old man.' "'Yes,' replied the stranger. "'He has got to be, I suppose. "'This is the country of La Longue Traverse.' "'I believe you,' responded Achille, cheerfully. "'What you call him your name?' "'Ned Trent. "'Me Achille, Achille Picard. "'I capitan of those dogs on that winter brigade.' "'It is a hard post. "'The winter travel is pretty tough.' "'I believe you.' "'Better to take La Longue Traverse in summer, huh?' La Longue Traverse? He's not matter when you take him. Right you are. Have there been men sent out since you came here? Bah, oui. One, two, three, I don't remember. I think Joe Bagnot. Nobody, he don't know, but that old man and his coureur du bois. He is one very great man. Nobody is know what he will do. "'I'm due to hit that trail myself, I suppose,' said Ned Trent. "'I have think so,' acknowledged Achille, still with a tone of most engaging cheerfulness. "'Shall I be sent out at once, do you think?' "'I don't know. Sometime that old man very quick. Sometime he very slow. One day Injun make him very mad. He let him go, and shot that Injun right off. Another time he get mad on one voyageur, but he don't kill him quick. 
He bring him here, make him stay in dose warm room, feed him dose plenty grub. Pretty soon dose voyageurs get fat, is go soft. He no good for dose trail. Old man, he make him go very far off. Most to Whale River. It is plenty coal. That voyageur, he freeze to his inside. They tell me he fix him like that. Achille, you haven't got anything against me. Do you want me to die? The half-breed flashed his white teeth. Bah, no, he replied carelessly. For what I want that you die. I think you bus up bad. Vous avez la mauvaise fortune. Listen, I have nothing with me. But out at the front I am very rich. I will give you a hundred dollars if you will help me to get away. I can't do it, smiled Picard. Why not? Old man, he find that out. He is one devil, that old man. I like first-rate help you. I like that hundred dollar. On Ojibwe country, they make his name Wagosh. That mean fox. He know everything. I'll make it two hundred, three hundred, five hundred. What you want me do? hesitated Achille Picard at the last figure. Get me a rifle and some cartridges. The half-breed rolled a cigarette, lighted it, and inhaled a deep breath. "'I can't do it,' he declared. "'I can't do it for a thousand dollar, ten thousand. I don't think you find anyone in this settlement what can dare do it. He is one devil. He's count all the carbine on the post, and when he is miss one, he find out pretty quick who is take him. Steal one from someone else, suggested Trent. He fine out just same, objected the half-breed obstinately. You don't know him. He make you give yourself away when he like do that. The smile had left the man's face. This was evidently too serious a matter to be taken lightly. Well, come with me then, urged Ned Trent with some impatience. A thousand dollars I'll give you. With that you can be rich somewhere else. But the man was becoming more and more uneasy, glancing furtively from left to right and back again, in an evident panic lest the conversation be overheard, although the nearest dwelling-house was a score of yards distant. Hush, he whispered. You mustn't talk like that. Does old man find you out? You can't hide away from him. Old time, long ago, Pierre Cadot is stole fifteen skin of the otter, the sea otter, and he has sold em in Winnipeg. He has get bout thousand beaver, five hundred dollar. Then he has make those long voyage west, very far west, on the Peace River. He has make him dose cabin, where he has lived long time with one man of Mackenzie. He is call it his name Dick Henderson. I is meet Dick Henderson on Winnipeg last year, when I make paddle on dem factor brigade and dose high commissionaire. He has told me one night pretty late he wake up all de quick he can when he is hear one noise in dose cabin, and he has seen one injun. Like phantom against the moon to de door. Dick Henderson, he is sleep, so he don't know what he must do. Dus Injun is very soft and go on bunk of Pierre Cadot. Pierre Cadot is make de big cry. Dick Henderson say he no see Dus Injun no more, and he find de door shut. Bah, Pierre Cadot, she's go dead. He is make one big hole in his chest. Some enemy, some robber frightened away because the Henderson man woke up, probably, suggested Ned Trent. The half-breed laid his hand impressively on the other's arm and leaned forward until his bright black eyes were within a foot of the other's face. When dos injun is stand him in the moonlight, 
Dick Henderson is sees his face. Dick Henderson is no all those Injun. He has told me that Injun is not Peace River Injun. Dick Henderson is say those Injun is Ojibwa Injun. Ojibwa Injun two thousand miles west on Peace River. That's curious. I was tell you another story," went on Akil after a moment. "Never mind," interrupted the trader. "I believe you." Maybe," said Akil cheerfully. "You stand somehow, not much, if he send you out pretty quick. Those small pedri is young, and those duck. Maybe you is catch them. Maybe you is killed them with bow and arrow." That's not big chance. You must give those coureurs du bois to sleep when you arrive. Voila, I give you my knife. He glanced rapidly to right and left, then slipped a small object into the stranger's hand. Bah, I tink does all manners know dat. I tink he keep you here till time when dose perdri and ducks is all grown up big enough so he can fly. I'm not watched," said the young man in eager tones. "I'll slip away tonight." "That no good," objected Picard. "What you do? Suppose you do dat, those coureurs kill you too sweet. They is have good excuse, and you is have nothing to make the fight. You sleep away, and those old man is sent out plenty injun. They is find you sure." Bah! If he send you out, then he send only two injun. Maybe you fight them. I don't know. No, mon ami. If you is one get away when those old man he don't know it, you must have those carbine. Then you is have one little chance. Bah! If you is not have him those carbine, you must need those little grub he give you, and not plenty injun follow you. Only two. And I cannot get the rifle. And those old man is don't send you out till it is too late to make the grub on the forest. That's what I think. That is not funny for you. Ned Trent's eyes were almost black with thought. Suddenly he threw his head up. I'll make him send me out now, he asserted confidently. How you make it him? I'll talk turkey to him till he's so mad he can't see straight. Then maybe he'll send me out right away. How you make him so mad? inquired Picard with mild curiosity. Never you mind. I'll do it. Bah, we oui, ruminated Picard. He is get mad pretty quick. I think perhaps dat plan he go all right. You was get him mad plenty easy. Then maybe he is send you out toot sweet. Maybe he is shoot you. I'll take the chances, my friend. Bah we oui, shrugged Achille Picard. It is one chance. He commenced to roll another cigarette. End of chapter four. Recording by Roger Moline.